Hello and welcome to Excel Dashboard Templates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel Dashboard Templates.com where you're sure to learn the latest posts, tips, tricks, techniques, everything about Excel. All right, today we are going to create a mostly dynamic chart in Excel to chart the last three months, and we are not going to use the offset formula. So it's mostly dynamic because offset is truly dynamic. It has uh, what's called volatile operations, which means it will, as you add a new value, the chart will just automatically change. Um, so it's doing that calculation all the time. Now, some people don't like that. So if you don't, let me show you this quick and easy way to go about making your chart look like this, which is you've got every month in the year because you set up your data for the months throughout the year and you're entering data every single month. But you only want to chart the last three. So you want your chart to be looking like this so april march and february which are they and january falls off the list all right let's show you how we go about doing that so once again we've got our data set up so that months are already entered in the spreadsheet and you're just going to go ahead and add the next value of your sales for may and you want um, it to determine which are the last three so to do that i've created another column in front of my months and sales and I'm going to have this calculate the last three months for us. So let's go about uh, and do that. So what you want to do is we're going to do an equals if formula. So this is just a standard if formula. So equals if, I'm going to hit tab to make it bring in my parentheses and get it set up. And we're going to do an and because we're going to do two different checks. The first check that we want to do is we want to see if C5, which we have a value of 113 here, so we want to say if C5 is greater than zero, then we know it is potentially in our last three range. Now we're going to do an, a comma and we're going to check C6, but we're going to check and see if it's blank. Then we know it is the last one. So if we do is blank, I do ISB hit tab, it fills in is blank and puts my parentheses in there. And I want to say if C6 is blank, end my parentheses, end the ampersand or the and uh, junction. So we've got and if C5 is greater than zero and C6 is blank, we know this is the absolute last value that has been entered in this column. So I'm going to do a comma and we're going to put a value of one in the cell over here in A5. Now, if it is not either of those, we want to check some other conditions. So I'm going to do a comma and we're going to do the value if that and junction uh, formula is false. And we're going to say do another if statement. So we're going to do if tab to put in the parentheses. And now we're going to say A6. So this value right here, since we're going to be filling this column in with a number of one, two, and three, so that we can determine which ones are the last three, uh, we need to see if right below it, is this already filled in with a number? So we're going to say if A6 equals the number one, now, if that equals the number one, we know that it is the last value in the set that we're looking for. Um, and so if that equals one, well, then we know if we're right above it, then this should equal two. So I'm going to do if a6 equals one, comma, the value of true is number two. And then finally, we want to do one last if statement. If the value down here is actually equal to two, then we know it's the third value in the series. And if it is the third value in the series, we're going to go ahead and put in three. So that therefore, um, over here next to April, we'll have one. We'll have two next to March. We'll have three next to February. Well, what if it's January? What we want to do if, um, is just end it and say with another comma and do quotes. We'll just make it blank and end all of our parentheses and hit enter. And let's go ahead and check out that formula. Let's put in the number one here because April is there and it's the last value. So let me copy this formula. So I did control C, highlighting the range, doing control V. And we've now pasted that formula throughout that range. Now, as you can see, May is not um, valid because there's no data here. This is the last one or number one. This is number two and this is three months back. So if I type in a value of 150 in here, notice it shifts which ones are the last three. So great, now we have a way to identify the last three of our range. Now there's two ways that you can make a dynamic chart on this. One is we can filter this range by highlighting it, going up to our home ribbon, choosing um, the sort or filter options and filter for one, two, and three, create a chart on that range. But um, you know that ends up hiding your rows, so it's not the best option in my, my mind because then you'll have to unhide rows and, and the like. Um, but let's go ahead and what we want to do is highlight this entire range, go up to the insert ribbon, 
and then we want to insert a pivot table and let's just create it on a new table range. Okay, so now we've created our pivot table and what we want to do is you'll have a pivot table field list. We want to just um, fill this in so that we can get, get the same data that you saw before but only for the last three months. So for month, we want to drag that and put that into the row labels. For sales, we want to go ahead and drag that and put that into values. And then last three months, we're going to drag this and make this a report filter. So once we do that, you can see we're still getting all of the different values here that we were getting in our previous range. But if we go up to this report filter up at the very top, pick the down arrow, select multi, select multiple items, check that box, and uncheck the blank value. So if we uncheck the blank value and click on OK, notice it gets rid of them all and uh, April, uh, March, April, May. Um, that is because I refreshed my data with it. Um, if I go up to data menu, so if I click anywhere within this pivot table, go up to my data ribbon and click on refresh all. Notice you can also right click on it and do refresh. Finally, there is, um, if you hover over refresh all, you'll notice control alt F5 will also refresh that data. So let me just right click and do refresh. And you can see um, uh, since I've modified that April and May, um, we've got March, February, March, and April. They all have a count sales of one. Now we don't want to count the sales, we actually want to sum this. So I'm going to go back to my field list. Um, I can also right click in here and we want to do value field settings. And then in this pop-up, we want to do a sum, not a count. And you can see there's our sales for February, March, and April. All right, now I can get rid of my field list and click anywhere into the table. And if you go up to your insert ribbon, go to a column chart, click on a 2D column chart, and you will now get a chart that only does the last three months. You may want to clean it up by right-clicking on some of the buttons and hiding all the buttons. Total doesn't make sense, and I want to call this sales. So I'm just going to type that in and hit enter. We've got February, March, and April. It is only charting the last three months. Now, it is not completely dynamic as we talked before. So if I go back to my original spreadsheet and I put in a value of 100 and let's do 175 in May as sales, you'll notice that my months have changed for the last three months. If I go back to my pivot table, it has not updated and my chart has not updated. But I could set up a macro that on open, you know, the the uh, spreadsheet uh, refreshes all um, pivot tables. I can come in and right click and do refresh on my pivot table. Uh, and um, once I do that, you will notice the chart range is automatically updated. So I don't have to do anything to click on my chart, change the series to a new range. It's going to grab whatever is in my pivot table. And that's one easy way that you can use a or make a mostly dynamic uh, Excel chart for the last three months without using the offset formula. Um, so we're going to we did that once again by doing a nested if statement to determine the last three months. We create a pivot table from that new data range, create a pivot chart from that data of the pivot table, and then we want to refresh it every time we add new data. Thanks again for visiting my channel. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for all the likes and also head on over to excel-dashboardtemplates.com so you can see a write-up of this video as well as others that you may have missed already. Thanks very much.